Hey guys, I have some exciting news to share. After overwhelming requests throughout all the years of videos, we have finally put together the ultimate three-day detailing masterclass with Jason Rose, Kevin Brown, and of course myself at the world-class Rupes Training Academy in Denver, Colorado on June 18th, 19th, and 20th of 2024. This will be hands-on in-person training so you can be better, faster, and more profitable than ever before. Now, I'd imagine many of you watching this right now already know how to polish or at least are familiar with using a machine. But if you join us in training camp for three full days, you'll leave knowing the secrets to high efficiency defect removal with a dual action polisher, a rotary polisher, and even sanding and do all of that profitably. Becoming a specialist in general is usually more profitable and for me more fun than being what we call a GP or a general practitioner. At the same time, I understand there's no doubt there's many classes out there that are really good that can teach you how to polish a car. But this class is going to do three things that most don't. Number one, you're going to learn how to get peak performance out of your polishing system and how that translates to better results in less time. Second, you'll learn the why, meaning why are we recommending specific techniques and procedures? It's so you can learn to adjust your techniques based on what the paint is telling you and by understanding the theory of why the pads and the products work the way that they do on different paints. This is a completely different philosophy that will allow you to diagnose and correct difficult paint imperfections on your own. Third, we're going to put you through what we call an MBA in a day, so you know what prices to charge, what service offerings to stay away from, and how to filter profit-draining customers, aka discount junkies, how to set up your accounting software, then how to actually read it and use it to drive your business decisions day after day to increase profitability quarter after quarter and year after year. We're also going to have a ton of fun filming a live podcast, YouTube episode, and have plenty of time after class for dinner and socializing. Now, this is going to be the event you're not going to want to miss. Now, also keep in mind, we have limited space, so it's first come, first serve basis. But if you go to the link in the description, then try to register and this box pops up showing that the class is now full, please email me directly at Larry at and I'll put you on a waiting list should any spots become available in the future. As always, thank you guys. This is going to be an absolute blast. I think you're really going to use this knowledge for the rest of your career. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. I'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on something that I see on every single car that comes in here and every car that I see on the street. Of course, I'm talking about tire browning. What is it? It's a sticky, goopy like film that's brown and it's stuck on the tires. We're going to go over the step-by-step -step process for removing that super simple today on this episode of Drive and Protect. <laughs> Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. More on this coming up. The 1989 Pontiac Firebird 20th Anniversary Trans Am came with a 3.8 liter V6 turbo, pushing 250 horse and 340 foot pounds of torque, and it was roughly eight to $10,000 more than the base model. These were limited production and offered as a complete package. In other words, each car, the exterior was white, the interior was saddle, it had a T-top, and it came with a leather interior. That's it. Those are the only options. Now, obviously, because of that, the turbo closely resembled the base model known as the GTA, or the Gran Turismo Americano, with some updates. First and most obvious is the turbo badge on the quarters, the winged tire emblem behind the front tire, dual twin stainless steel tailpipes, the 20th anniversary badge on the front and the B pillars, the turbo badge between the taillights, and a turbo boost gauge incorporated into the tack. And of course, finally, the 20th anniversary badge on the interior leather map pocket. With all that being said, step one is just to lift the car up, pop the wheels off, and clean the undercarriage. Now, because this has less than 8,000 original miles, this process is really about inspecting for leaks, removing spiders, and of course, spider webs, and to inform my customer of any issues should I find any underneath. I repeated the exact same process on the top as well. That's possibly the cleanest underneath I've ever seen in my life. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful platform on which to create your very own website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members and send email communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. 
Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and even likes. You can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule posts too. You can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. Display posts from your social profiles on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too, like this one here. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ammo NYC to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now back to Trans Am. Wow, that's heavy. Now this here is always tricky on older cars. If I get this wet, and try to dry it, this could disintegrate just because this thing hasn't been touched in forever. And we'll hand wipe this down. Although there is a little bit of stuff in here. Right there, you see this here? That's a little mouse. That's mouse PP. This is why we do these things. See that right there? So I'll take this like this. Pour some in there. My job really is just to kind of Find all the things an inspector would find so that we can avoid having any deductions in terms of price. This is the actual definition of detailing now. So I kind of like doing these things. Yes, it's not a disaster and so on and so forth. But if I can do my job here and squeeze out an extra 2% on this massive collection, that's a serious amount of money. I, as a detailer, make money and then make the client money even more than what he's spent on me. Everybody wins. Just like if somebody gets in the car and moves my seat like a half an inch, I'm like, the feng shui in here is off. What is going on? So Jordan, that's equivalent to putting wheel woolies in my wash bucket. Next, I'm using compressed air to dry the paint. Remember, compressed air is a detailer's best friend. For the rims, I'm using Ammo Plum, a wheel brush, and 4 aught steel wool on the inner barrels that are caked with brake dust. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the rubber on this car is pretty caked up with what looks like brown goopy oil. This is usually caused by the car and tire in static storage. In other words, when the tire sits for long periods of time, the rubber reacts with the oxygen or oxidation and of course the ozone from the atmosphere. Over the years, the various rubber manufacturers recognized these chemical reactions and added antioxidants to slow the rate of oxidation and antiozonants to slow the effects of ozone on the rubber. This was all done during the vulcanization process. This browning effect that you're seeing right here are those chemicals that bleed out of the rubber to prolong its elasticity and slow the rate of premature degradation. In other words, although unsightly and causes your tire shine to sling a little bit more if it's applied over the browning, it's actually somewhat normal. However, in my experience, I do tend to see a bit more browning on cars that sit in storage for long periods of time and when enthusiasts use lots of solvent-based, or in other words, super shiny tire dressing without cleaning the rubber every few weeks. But either way, not to worry, removing it, super easy. So this tire is a great example of what can go wrong here. Normally, uh, I would be putting it on the wheel stand, but now I put it on the cart just so we can film it. If you zoom in right here, I just took my, my fingernail and scraped it, and you can see underneath. I'll do it again, watch. So that is the coating that's on there. So to get it off, what you're gonna do is we take, I'm using Plum. Now Plum is a high pH and this is lots of oil. So this is a, a good um, solution here in terms of pH levels. So you don't want something neutral because you're not gonna be able to, to, to attack any of the oils in this. So we'll do this section right here. If you wanna get real crazy, we can get into smaller little brushes. You can use, uh, if you wanna go nuts, you can use a bigger one. But the idea here is, I'm gonna just do a small area. If I come in with the wire brush, you can see I'm really getting in. I'm not causing any issues for the rubber itself. So if I take this, wipe it now, look at all the brown stuff that came off. That's all the anti ozonants and then I believe the solvents that were put on this from years ago. And so look at the difference from here to here. Not only does it look cleaner, it looks fresh. Look at that, that's a perfect example right there. 
then when, the, when I put tire dressing on, it's gonna look much more rich, much more deep. So what I'm gonna do, take this down, put on the wheel stand, I'm gonna power wash this, dry it off, and I'll show you the 50-50. Okay, next up is polishing, and of course, white paint can be a little bit tricky, so let's go over a few things. Right off the bat, this tends to be more on the thin side, let's call it. It's late 80s, Pontiac. So what I did was I measured the paint. You always wanna do that first. We were about four mils on the paint, and then the door jam, just to kinda, of a little rule of thumb, was about two, two and a half. So we have about a mil. That's on the thinner side, especially uh, when we're talking about selling the car and it's older. So we're gonna be focused more on a preservation detail. What that means is probably a one step, which is gonna be a foam straight cut pad with exfoliate polish. We'll do a few test spots. If you're uncomfortable, you can do a test spot by hand as well. Now let's go into the, the issue here with white paint. Most people walk up to white paint and they go, this looks absolutely amazing. You could probably even see it on camera. It looks pretty shiny. But if I were to shut all the lights off, use one source of light and put it on the paint, you're gonna see swirls everywhere. And of course, a little bit of contamination as well. So this paint really needs to be exfoliated, kind of bring a different color white out of here. But most people don't do that because you don't immediately see it. Why? Right off the bat, if you think about scratching and swirling, that tends to be white, right? So if you take clear coat or regular paint, meaning single stage paint, and you scratch it, the light reflects off and kind of comes back at you on the whiter or lighter side. So if you have a white background, meaning white paint, and on top of it, let's say there's clear coat, and then you have a white scratch, you basically have this, my little example. This is a piece of paper. I'll put it against my black shirt. This is gonna represent a scratch. If I put that right there, you're not gonna be able to see it. White on white, it's camouflage, makes sense. However, if this paint was black, if this car was black, right now, I guarantee you, if you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this thing looks horrible, because there's squirrels and scratches, because you can see it, the background is black. So in this example, I have a piece of paint, and I put it here, you can probably see that scratch from here, right? So that's really what's going on. It's not the fact that it's that white isn't as scratched as black. It's the fact that the background is white and the background is black and it's just a camouflage thing. So with all that being said, you can't neglect white. We're gonna polish this thing out and at the end, you're gonna see, I'll do some 50-50s. The white will actually look a different shade of white and it's, in my opinion, it's gonna increase the value of the car because it's gonna be way more original. It's gonna look deep, rich, absolutely gorgeous and I think the new owner is gonna love it. To polish the paint, I'm using a waffle foam pad with exfoliate polish, along with lots of compressed air to blow out the pads to manage the single stage residue coming off the surface. Now check this out. Just after a few passes, you can see a huge difference. In person, meaning not on camera, the depth and warmth of the white paint is noticeably different and well worth the effort I'm going through right now. It's very hard to catch on camera, but man, is it significant in person. Now, just to sort of emphasize it a little bit more, I taped up the middle of the hood, just a random spot, then polished around it to try to capture the difference in clarity from before and after. Again, massive improvement. With the exterior now exfoliated, I immediately filled the pores of the paint with Blush Pro to give it that warmth and glow of Carnuba, but with a bit more protection from the Reflex Pro 2 additives. Afterwards, I added Gelee Pro to the rims, then let it cure for a while, then replaced them back on the car before quickly protecting the really clean interior. Now, when it comes to the interior, this is as close to perfection as you get. And as the saying goes, in terms of perfection, it's not exactly what you can add, but what you should be taking away. In this case, I'm taking away tons of steps. We don't need to steam clean and go nuts. It is really perfect in here. What I am gonna do, take a little bit of lather, spray it on a towel, and just gently wipe down any dusts. Then what I'm gonna do, is something that should be done on all cars. Even if it's clean or not clean, that kind of thing, this one being absolutely spectacular, we still need to preserve it. So in that case, I'm gonna be using mousse. But the little trick here is once I put mousse on it, I'm going to, I'll put it here, I'm gonna let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes and I'm not gonna remove it. And the reason why is this has been sitting for such a long time. Mind you, people haven't been getting in and out of it, so it hasn't been creased or any of that stuff. So it's really perfect, but I'm gonna give it time to actually absorb. Sometimes when we put cleaners on or we put moisturizers on and we remove them too quickly, it doesn't give it enough time to actually absorb into the material. So I'm gonna give it a bunch of time, 15, 20, 30 minutes, depends. I'm gonna go work on something else, play with the engine, clean the glass, so on and so forth, then come back, go in and wipe it off and we're good to go. Other than that, I'm not gonna touch anything in here because it's perfect.
I finished everything up by cleaning the glass and of course adding fresh mud tire dressing to the freshly cleaned rubber and you can really see the difference of before and after. The rubber has this deep, rich, kind of healthy look with the browning now gone. The only thing left to do is to take her for a ride and to show her to Dominic. All right, we are in the Firebird Turbo Trans Am. Absolutely unbelievable. If you had this in high school, you were the man. 3.8 liter V6, about 250 horsepower. They made 1,550 or so. Now, what's really cool about this is when it became the pace car, the 73rd pace car, it is reported that this is the first car that didn't need to be altered or modified or souped up to actually go into the Indianapolis uh, 500 as, as a pace car, which is super cool. Now this one here, if you look, it's got all the electronics. Can you imagine in 1989 to have these buttons? It's like you're driving in a spaceship, but it still retains that muscle car feels. 8,000 miles or a little bit, a little bit under 8,000 miles. So if we put this in perspective, 250 horsepower, if you were to take a standard 2024 Toyota Tacoma, just a regular truck, everything from the base model all the way up to the souped up model, you have 228 horsepower at the base model and 278 at the souped up one. So what's my point? A regular truck on the road today has more horsepower than this thing, but this is super special. Back. It's back. It's, so it's white. The car is actually the white. The car again. is actually white. Good to see you. Good to see you. How's everything? Very cool. We Very did cool. a lot of work on this. The paint was super soft. Yeah. But you can see it's a different, it's not as yellow or it's, tinted. Yeah. Right? It's not, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's much more bright <laughs> that and vibrant. Color, that color, yeah. ugh, yeah, I yeah. like that. All right. Yeah, the yuck and color. And we really cleaned up your, your tires, I meaning the rubber aspects of them. Like wow. it was very brown and gross, so we did a whole thing there. Beautiful. Cleaned everything up, but the interior, spectacular as it was. Yes. We just preserved it. Yeah, the Put interior some, uh, was in amazing shape in the car. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons I bought it, you know, 10 years ago, whenever I could bought this thing. Yeah. Um, Very low miles. Smells good. Smells good. Low mileage. All right, great so what shape. else is for sale here? Okay, so what we're doing is, so the Cyclone that you know. Yep. This. Yep. And the GNX. Walk these. This one here. Okay, so these three are going. Yep. And three of the five vets are going. So the 09 ZR1 Blue Devil, Oof. the the Z06 Le Mans car. Yeah and the 96 Grand Sport. So the three Vets are going, and the three GM Halos are going. Wow. All yeah. right, so the question that everyone's been texting me about, why would you do that? Okay, so look behind you, right? So <laughs> you're seeing a lot more yellow in the garage. Yes. And three, there's- Oh, that's new. Uh, yeah, the 355, that's um, 5,000 kilometers, European car, 5,000 wow. kilometers, gated, six speed, right? Um, so that's coming. Um, we got a Scud. We got a 2,000 mile Scud, which what? I sent you the pictures of. It's at um, the dealership right now. Okay. Um, getting a little uh, heater, Let me guess, heater yellow? core love. It's yellow. Of yellow course. with gray stripes. Um, and there's um, three or four other big guys really coming in. Yeah. So I need to make some space. Yeah, that's right? fair enough. So we're, we're kind of shifting the collection around. We're keeping the Chevelles. We're keeping the older vets. We're keeping the 76 Caddy. We're doing some work on the Caddy right now. I have a 1937 Cord coming in, just finishing off a, a year long resto. Wow. So that's coming in. So we've got other stuff coming in. So we need to make some room for the stuff that's been here a long time go to go out and just you know create more space and of course keep you busy. I right? was just gonna say, that's the best thing. You yeah, got new keep, cars going. Yeah, new cars coming in, so there's more work to do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yep. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you're interested in any of these cars, we'll put some links down below. They're going up everywhere. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.